Today's podcast is sponsored by Inverted Gear. Inverted Gear sells jujitsu equipment, jujitsu gis, no gi stuff like rash guards and shorts. Their new light pearl weave gi is probably my favorite one. It's very light, very durable, very comfortable. If you go to their website, www.invertedgear.com, and type in the coupon code SHOWTHEART15, no spaces, you will get 15% off, guys. So check them out. They're great. Our next sponsor is Chimera Coffee. Chimera Coffee is packed with premium grade nootropics, proven to help you increase your focus, your power, and cognition. What are nootropics? Nootropics are powerful cognitive enhancers that may improve some aspect of mental function. What does that mean? That means it gives you a mental edge in things. I take Chimera Coffee before I train jujitsu or before podcasting, and I feel like I get that caffeine jolt of energy but i also get a mental edge a little extra clarity and it helps a lot if you go to chimera coffee with a k.com type in the code show the art no spaces and you get 10 percent. go out and get it today's guest is none other than jiu-jitsu world champion rafael lovato jr on this podcast we talk about his martial arts history where he's come from We also talk about his training regimens and how he prepares for competitions. And we finally go into his upcoming fight at Legacy 54. We hope you guys enjoy it just like we did. Dude, you're an iconic, (laughs) legendary, super technician, super artist. Uh, We've been following you forever. We're big fans of your artistry. I can keep going, but I'll just stop there. How are you doing? Well, thank you so much. I uh, really appreciate it. I'm doing amazing. Chilling out. Um, <laughs> been having a great fight camp and uh, just uh, ready to go, man. Just one more week. Awesome, man. And this is your third fight, right? Yeah, my third MMA fight. Um, mm-hmm. And this one will be for the Legacy Middleweight title. So moving quickly. And um, I'm excited to go out there and show my work. Did you have any, any any amateur fights before your professional career? or No. no. Yeah, that's what no. I figured. It's, it's funny. I was just talking to Marcos, uh, and I, I thought you had more fights than, than just two, but, you know, uh, you just there's a lot of clips of you online. I guess people cut them up too much. Of yeah, um, only had two, um, but, uh, you know, I've been training for a long time. Um, you know, I grew up doing stand-up and, and training all – uh, martial arts, all facets of the game. Um, so, you know, I, I feel comfortable moving quickly and, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not that young. So, uh, I'm trying to, to make my moves right now. Sure, man. And, uh, what martial arts did you start with actually? I mean, obviously your, your career has been, has been, you know, in the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu light, but what martial arts did you really come up with besides Jiu Jitsu? Well, my father is a lifetime martial artist. So, um, you know, growing up, like martial arts was a huge part of our family. Um, as early as I can remember, you know, I was following my dad, um, to the Academy. Um, I, I was born in Cincinnati, Ohio, and he was yeah. training at, at the JKD, um, school there. Um, and, uh, he was an assistant instructor there. And when I say JKD, I mean, Jeet Kune Do. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I was uh, constantly around it. He was mm-hmm. holding mitts for me, you know, as soon as I could, I could stand. Um, and the, the very first art that I started in, like, officially was mm-hmm. Kempo. Um, they, okay. they offered uh, Kempo classes for kids um, at, the, at the JKD Academy that he was an assistant instructor at. Um, that was the very first thing that I studied and I got rank in. But... Um, you know, we, we moved, uh, when I was still pretty young to Oklahoma and then my father opened up a a school here. Eventually he he first started off teaching in a hospital, teaching a martial arts class in a hospital, Uh uh, because he was a physical therapist there. And, uh, and the class got so big that he decided to open up his own school. This was after we did the whole garage training time too like he used to do classes in in our garage nice and um and then you know it grew to where he felt comfortable in opening up a school um 
And, uh, you know, really everything kind of revolved around JKD for the most part. Um, but JKD is, you know, it's mixed martial arts. Sure. Um, yes, sir. but my, my father's background was, um, was in boxing and some traditional martial arts. Um, uh, but he really gravitated towards the boxing. And so I did a lot of boxing and Muay Thai and, uh, you know, I eventually did golden gloves boxing, um, whenever I was like nine to around 12. Nice. I didn't know uh, that about you. Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that was, uh, probably the thing that I, was most serious into like, um, you know, competitively, I was thinking that, you know, maybe I'd want to try to be on the Olympics one time sometime, you know, and, and, uh, um, that was for boxing. Okay. Yes. And, uh, you know, I was just a kid and, and I was just like, man, you know, that, that's something that I want to chase. And, um, I even competed in like Taekwondo tournaments. Um, I did a uh, Kali competitions, yeah, you know, stick fighting. Nice. Yeah. We know a lot about, uh, Jeet Kune Do and Kali and we are actually JKD guys. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So you guys totally get it. You know, I trained we Wing know. Chun. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I mean e everything, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, um, even like, you know, Salat and yeah. Yeah, tra man. trapping and <laughs> all that stuff. And, um, uh, and, you know, I grew up doing that mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, for, 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 for me, like for my father, it was always just about, uh, you know, making sure I could defend myself and, and also obviously live kind of the martial arts lifestyle and have the discipline and everything. Um, but, uh, but then he discovered jujitsu, mm. um, you know, through a JKD instructor conference in California, you know, they had those every year uh -huh. and, and grappling and ground fighting, you know, was a part of JKD. Like right. everyone knew it existed, but it was very rough. It had like shoot fighting origins and like, you right. know, Malaysian grappling that and Larry Hart. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like it was, um, uh, it was pretty rough and rugged and, um, you know, and then he went to instructors conference and the Gracies were, were part of the, the conference, um, as guest instructors for the week, you know, every day would kind of focus on a different, a different art or a different range, um, of, of combat. And, uh, when they got to the grappling part, the Gracies were teaching and, um, you know, my dad immediately fell in love with jujitsu. Um, he's a smaller guy. What it, and, was it all 900 Gracies that were teaching? Man, it was a lot of them. Uh, he, he, you know, he got he gets all the pictures from that first time. You know, he didn't even have a gi uh, at that time. Um, you know, and, and, and uh, he still has the pictures from them. But, you know, like Helsin, Hoys, Horian, Henzo, uh, you know, they were all a part of it. They were all there. Uh, Grandmaster Elio was there. Wow. And, um, and, and so, you know, then it was like, okay – this is a game changer. And, uh, and he fell in love with jujitsu right away. And, um, he started making the long journey from Oklahoma to California and, and given mm -hmm. my dad does, doesn't fly. So he would drive <laughs> wow. all the way. He doesn't like to fly. And, um, uh, and he would train with the Gracie, he trained at the Gracie Academy. And then he kind of transitioned into training with Hickson and training at Hickson's Academy. Was that before and, uh, UFC first UFC? Like, in that yes, time? it was, it was just before, just before. Okay. Nice. Um, and uh, and then the following year, I believe, uh, uh, for the next JKD Instructors Conference, the Machado brothers mm. were a part of teaching um, the jiu-jitsu portion. Okay. And, uh, and, you know, he really clicked with them. And, uh, you know, given like he was training the Hickson's Academy, but Hickson wasn't there. He was, Hickson was still fighting. Um, and so uh, he kind of fell in love with the Machado brothers. They had a, a school all together. And, uh, and that's what my dad, um, you know, kind of like transitioned into, yeah, yeah, into being one of their students mm. and, uh, he competed at the Pan Ams around that time. It was like, what, 95, I believe it was 95 Pan Ams. Uh, my dad competed, um, uh, oh, nice. and, and, uh, and he did the whole training camp with the Machado brothers and everything. And, uh, and then I think shortly after that, right around into 96, mm -hmm. uh, um, he got a phone call and, uh, and, you know, Chuck Norris was one of the <laughs> oh. students, students of the Machado brothers. And he got a phone call from Carlos Machado and Carlos said, you know, 
you know, hey, I'm, I'm going to be moving to Dallas, Texas, and so I'm going to be close to you, and uh, you know, we'll have to train, da da da, da. and uh, and that was amazing. Uh, wow. Chuck 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 wanted to to have Carlos there so he could study jujitsu full time, and so Chuck helped Carlos kind of um, you know get started there in Dallas. Uh, the very first place that Carlos was teaching at was actually inside the studio of Walker Texas Ranger. <laughs> wow. Cool, that's and, pretty uh, pretty cool. Yeah, and then uh, that was when I had my first official class with Carlos. Um, mm. Was at the the Walker or you know the Channel Nine or whatever it was uh, studio, and uh, I'll, I'll never forget the mat room. There was a, a a light above the door, and it would when when it would flash on red, we had to all stop and be super quiet, you know. And then when it would go off, we could start training again. Ah, <laughs> pretty cool. Yeah, because they're filming and stuff. Is that what you're saying? The re- right, right. Yeah, they were filming, and uh, eventually Carlos got his own school and everything. And and before that, we had uh, my father brought Hells in, and he brought Hoyler for seminars, you know. But for us, it was very random, you know, the experience that we could get with a uh, with a black belt, you know, because we were right, in Oklahoma, right? And um, and so you know, he was going all the way to California, or we were trying to get our hands on videotapes, you know, the Henzo Gracie Craig Kukuk tapes. Old school. <laughs> There's all like 24 of those. Yeah, you know all the old school VHS tapes, and yeah. and um, you know he would only learn a little bit at a time, maybe two or three times a year, and uh, bring it back home, and then we would you know work on it together. Um, but then when Carlos moved to Dallas, that was just life changing for us because that's only about three three and a half hours away. Wow. And so and so then my father uh, started going there um, to train with uh, with Carlos. Hopefully not every night. <laughs> not every night, but every week. Every wow. week, every Thursday, he left super early. He would go and uh, do a private lesson and then train in the morning class and then drive straight back and then teach all night at uh, at the academy. And he did that for around a solid three to four years consistent wow. e- every week. And, uh, you know, then I became a you know, like 16, 17 years old. And, uh, and I got older and then, it, it, you know, obviously I didn't have any problems flying. <laughs> and, uh, and so it became easier for my dad to kind of shit me out mm-hmm. and I would go to California. Um, I made my first trip to Brazil in 1999 when I was 16, Ooh, Wow! And, uh, competing in the worlds. And, uh, you know, that was it, man. That was that was when the history began to to you know start getting r- written, and uh, we became the first American father and son jiu jitsu black belts, and and there it is. Wow. Awesome, man! What a great story. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. But you know, I, I it, for me, it was like when the UFC first came out, you know, and like I said, the way I started training martial arts, it was uh, it was for fighting. You know, there was never a tournament to to train for you Uh, know what i mean it was always it it was about the martial art and training and getting getting confidence and all that kind of good stuff exactly and and learning everything you know and uh Mm -hmm. all styles all all ranges of combat and then you know so when the ufc first came out and we we watched it obviously in the beginning it was still style versus style and then that's what you know Obviously, all the martial artists at that point in time, our eyes were open to Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and we all had to learn it, and that became my, my sole focus. Um, but, uh, you know, it was always kind of in the back of my mind that eventually I would fight MMA. Like, I was kind mm. of almost born for it, you know. I was almost bred for it because I was training mixed martial arts before people even really knew mixed martial arts. Sure, right. Um, and... But, uh, you know, obviously at that time, things were so different in jiu-jitsu with it being dominated by Brazilians. You know, obviously it still is to this day. But, uh, I, you know, I was, you know, going to Brazil and I was just like fascinated by by the champions down there. And, um, you know, I, I, I lost the first year I went in 1999. I said, you know, I'm going to come back and I want to win this. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, and then 2000, I won the Pan Ams in the Juvenile, and I went to Brazil. Ooh. I didn't win. I took third uh, in my weight and second in the Absolute, but I had eight matches uh, 
and I, I actually went against Tanquino, um, Vin, Vinny Magalais, Ricardo Dimench, Big wow. Mac. Wow. I fought all those guys. <laughs> Big <laughs> Mac. When we, wow. When we were teenagers. Wow. And, That's pretty crazy. Uh, and, and then that same year, 2000, I watched BJ Penn win. Um, you know, I was there and I watched him win. And then mm. I thought it was really like, you know, I want to put everything into jujitsu and, and, um, you know, becoming like the next American world champion and trying to be, you know, one of the guys in the top that, uh, you know, that was representing for America. Sure. sure. I have a question about, about jujitsu abroad. I mean, you've, you've competed in many different countries. Where do you think, you know, just competing at competitions, tournaments, as opposed to super fights, where do you think is the toughest competition? Is it from Brazil, United States, like, east coast west coast where would you say you've had the overall toughest competition um i mean you have to say brazil i think i mean now now you know it, it's it's changing because you know i think brazil's still number one maybe the u.s is a close number two as okay. far as like if you take the the medalists in the in the black belt division where do they live you yeah. know yeah um uh, but uh, it might it might almost be fifty fifty. I mean, there's so many guys that live here in the U.S. now that have uh, moved over from right. Brazil already. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. So I mean, it, it's starting to to look like the best jujitsu is here. But you know, it, it's just a different it's just a different vibe in Brazil, though. I mean, mm. the the uh, the hunger, you know, the drive to to get to that level where you can move to the U S and have a name and open up an Academy and, and, uh, you know, create opportunities for yourself. You know, it, it's that, that intensity and that hunger and that drive in Brazil, you know, to create, to create a bit of life for yourself. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's a whole nother, a whole nother energy, you yeah. know, nowadays what we're seeing here in the U S is, um, is a bunch of kids who are being homeschooled and are having parents really like invest in them and and allow them to be able to spend a whole bunch of time on the mat in the day instead of going to school sure. uh, um and you know they're they're traveling to tournaments and the, really everything is kind of already there provided for them to be successful they have great teachers and and what do you, you think know. about that kind of style of pushing your kid to to jujitsu and getting good at it like, because I've I've heard of a couple of kids being homeschooled for the sole purpose that they spend a lot of tra time training jujitsu. Well, how do you feel about that? Do you think that's the right way to go? Do you think there's a better way of doing it, especially for kids? Um, you know, I think you gotta. It's obviously going to depend situation to situation, but I think you have to be very careful. You know, because definitely, just in my time, you know, I mean, there was a lot of guys that I was competing with you know, that were around my age, um, coming up blue and purple, you know, that, that, uh, you know, they're not around anymore. <laughs> and, uh, and then I've seen other generations as well, people coming up and it's like, man, that kid's going to be really awesome. And, uh, and then they disappear. Um, you know, so there is definitely, you know, uh, a point at which someone could, could get burnt out, you know, um, yeah. especially, you know, you get you get a kid that's seven, eight years old and is going hard five, six, seven years. Next thing you know, they're 15, you know, they're in high school and they want to have some fun, <laughs> you know, and yeah. you realize, you know, um, I haven't had a chance to just be young and, and live a normal life. And uh, and so then they can lose direction and stuff. So sure. it can be I, very tricky. Yeah, I, I don't think you should ever push competition. I think it should always be fun. Um, you know, uh, I hate sometimes, I mean, you know, not that I hate it, but it sometimes it can be hard to see like such young kids, barely even 10 or, or even younger, you know, having such like tense parents and, oh, yeah. and <laughs> yelling and screaming for them to never step the foot on the mat. Oh my God. Yeah, Just it's hollering like, and yeah. Have you ever seen the documentary Trophy Kids? Or yeah, Trophy Kids. You know what? I saw that. Um, I mean, it was that's on Netflix, right? Yeah, it's on Netflix. I, I scrolled over it and I saw it, but um, but I, you know, 
I, I thought about watching it, but I haven't watched it yet, but it's on my radar. It's a really good documentary. It talks about exactly what we're talking about. Parents like really pushing their kids in, in a sport that they're, that they're into. And they're trying. They're almost living their life vicariously through their kid, and and they they really push their kids hard, and yeah. they, they kind of block out the rest of their lives. And in some cases, they uh, homeschool them. But it really shows uh, some of some some real families that actually push their kids, and you see the emotional. Um, I don't know the the emotional distraughtness, torment. Yeah, from from the kid that. You, you just feel so bad for them. They're not living as a child and experiencing all all things children should should be experiencing. It's no longer mm-hmm. play. Oh man. Yeah. But a great documentary. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, for sure. I mean that that's a part of it. I mean, I, I definitely think uh, you know, you can push them hard and there's there's just a fine line that you can follow um where you know it, it can it can all work out and definitely those kids are gonna turn into something special. Um but, uh, you know, I, I definitely, I definitely had some moments where I, where I felt at some time, like I was a little, you know, I was a little torn, like, you know, every, every night, you know, I, I like if I didn't go train, I, I would feel guilty, you okay. know what I mean? And, um, uh, I was like, man, I should be training. Uh-huh. Um, you know, I didn't even go to my own high school prom, you know, mm. so I could, so I could, so you could train. Fo- so I could focus on the Pan Ams. It was like oh, around man. the time of the Pan Ams. <laughs> nice. And, uh, and, you know, so uh, you definitely sacrifice a lot. Um, but, you know, as long as they still have their own little social life. And nowadays there's so many kids doing it. At the time I was doing it, I didn't have any kids to relate to, you know. So, gotcha. like, there, was not, there wasn't a whole bunch of kids training. Like, I was, like, the only one. I was training with – I was surrounded by adults the whole time. Sure. And um, – no, that's so, a good point. That's, a, that's you know a nowadays point. I think you know it's different. Like they could all be friends and have fun, and yeah. you know there there's a, a different social scene inside of um, the jujitsu. You know, kids and teenagers' lives, um, especially in California, for sure. I mean, uh, there's so many so many kids out there training. Yeah, exactly. Um, you've been competing forever. What is your mentality going into a competition? Like, what's priority? Are you thinking you gotta dominate at all costs? Are you thinking I want to showcase my jujitsu, my artistry? Like, I just want to pull off cool ass moves and impress my coaches and and training partners. Like, what are you thinking when you when you get in there? Um, you know, it's definitely changed a lot over the years uh, for me. Um, you know, you go through a lot of different you know, uh, mental shifts, um, as you mature and go through different things in life, you're in different points in your career and things. Um, you know, coming up, I was, uh, very intense, you know, I, I guess I'm still intense now, but like <laughs> Doing just my whole, my whole, you know, way of life. I mean, for me, everything was to become a black belt world champion. Sure. I mean, that was, that was, the that, end was goal. Uh, accomplished. that was accomplished. Yeah, that was just like, this is what my life is about. I'm going to sacrifice everything to make that happen. Nothing else matters. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so every competition was about getting closer and closer to reaching that goal. And, um, and I would take losses extremely hard. And, you know, I would go in to try to dominate and, and show improvement and, and always feel like I'm getting closer and closer to my goal. And, uh, and then, you know, I was fortunate, um, to be able to win on my second try, uh, as a black belt, you know, I, I, uh, I was able to win the worlds and then it was just like, well, <laughs> what, what now, you know, and obviously it's like, okay, I want to try to win multiple times, but there was a mental shift and, and having to change from like the hungry young guy coming up mm. where like, you know, I was the one putting my target on everybody. And it's just like, you know, it was almost a no lose situation most of the time. You know, if, if you went against someone that would, had already won the worlds and you hadn't won the worlds, you were supposed to lose. Sure. And so, right. you know, you could be the hungry, like, I'm coming at this guy. It like, kind of empowers you to be the underdog. Yeah, and exactly. Harder. 
Exactly. Yeah. And so then I had to go through a mental shift in like being able to deal with having a target and and starting to be the favorite in, in divisions and things like that. And and uh, and I, it was tough for me. It was definitely tough for me because I never I never had that sort of pressure. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then I put a lot of extra pressure on myself. Um, and, uh, you know, that was something that Solo helped me a lot with, with, you know, kind of finding myself through that. And and, um, mm-hmm. You know, and then I, I think it, it, it got to a point where, you know, I was obviously still chasing a second Gi World Title. You know, I've been able to win some some other big titles, no Gi World Titles and Brazilitos and things like that. But, um, you know, I was I was still competing, hopefully to try to win a second World Title. Medaled seven more times, but was never able to get a gold. But um, but, it, you know, it kind of got to the point where it's like, you know, it's not even so much about getting the second title or whatever. You know, it just got to the point where it's like, you know, I've established myself. I feel like I've I've left my mark. You know, I've uh-huh. had some great career moments. And now I'm just I'm doing it more for fun and for showing showing what I can do, you know, giving a piece of myself out there and, and showing that art artistry and yes. and uh, representing art representing my style of jujitsu, the style that I believe in, um, you know, things, things went a little deeper, you know, it wasn't about just medals anymore, you know, I've been able to, 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 to have that success already. And, uh, Uh and so, um, it shifted and then it, it even shifted greater in that direction after, uh, I had a, a pretty serious injury at the end of 2014, um, that, that kept me out of, of all the gi competitions, the major ones, um, and that was first, after your first MMA fight. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. It was. It was uh, right after I was getting ready for a Metamorphosis at the end of 2014, um, and uh, you know, training jujitsu. A lot of people thought it was from training MMA, but it was from training jujitsu, and uh, and I tore my pec tendon, oh, and man. you know, it was like a seven month recovery process. That, that had was to be like, the uh, harshest time in your life. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. One hundred percent. And that was like November of 2014 through to, uh, you know, May, June of uh, 20, 2015. So I was out of all the competitions. That was like the first time I had to sit out of the worlds. You know, oh. I'd done like every world since 1999. Sure. You know what I mean? <laughs> and um uh, and so it's just a whole new perspective got framed in my mind. And, and then as I started making my way back into competition, I even felt an even greater, like, just thankfulness um, mm-hmm. to be able to step on the mats and just do what I love and show show my work, show, you know, show my my, my, my jiu-jitsu. And, and, uh, and, and now, you know, that I had my second MMA fight and, and now that I'm kind of going into the MMA direction um, – you know, I feel even more like relaxed and happy with jujitsu. Now, the thing that really like gets me hungry and drives me and, uh-huh. and, and makes me feel like young again, really, is uh, is MMA. Nice. And so, mm. um, you know, that's that's one reason why I'm really exploring that. You know, awesome. Um, man. Can chasing. I ask you a question about your training compared to MMA? What has changed from competing at a high level in Brazilian jiu-jitsu to now? trying to compete at a high level in MMA. How does your training differ as far as physical preparation? How does it train? How does it differ as far as mental preparation? Is your drilling different? Obviously, you have to add things because of the striking. But is your drilling different? Or do you use the same methodologies from your BJJ training? Yeah. Um, you know, I would say the, the, the biggest shifts come mentally. Um you know, like, like it, it's a whole nother, it's a whole nother animal now. Yeah. I'm, I'm totally out of my comfort zone. You know what I mean? Sure. Now you got to um, worry about punch. Being punched in the face is a serious thing. Yeah. And that, and that's a daily occurrence. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's, uh, it, it's your life now, you know? And so, um, fortunately I grew up that way. You know what I mean? Sure. Uh, I had my father to think like, um, you know, he, he, I, I really feel like he put something special in, inside of me, um, and in and, and how I trained growing up and everything, and and I really believe in that. And and I, now I feel like I'm just kind of 
going back to that and bringing that out in, in me now, you know, as an adult with my experience, my knowledge and, and my skills, um, you know, and, and now the first two fights I had, okay. I definitely was, uh, was kind of, you know, I had a little extra nerves going on the training camps. I wouldn't say were exactly fun. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I learned a lot and I enjoyed it. Uh, but, uh, I wasn't having fun. Now I feel like I'm really starting to have fun. Nice. Speaking speaking on nerves and dealing with nerves, like a lot of people succumb to the pressure, to the nerves. Do you have any pre-fight rituals or anything you can tell people on how to deal with their nerves before a competition, jujitsu or MMA? Yeah, I mean, you know, all that comes down to to just being positive, um, you know, believing in yourself, being confident. And, uh, you know, a lot of like positive self-talk. I mean, the nerves are going to be there. The fears are going to be there. The doubts are going to be there. But being able to, to, you know, kind of control it and, uh, and use it in a positive way and, 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 and have that positive reinforcement in your mind and just, you know, telling yourself that, um, you know, that, that you can do it and, and you deserve it and you worked mm. hard for it and, would you like and, to and then, uh, share one then, of your affirmations with us? I mean, that's it. I mean, I, that's, you know. It, You'll do good. <laughs> <laughs> very much like, yeah. you know. Um, like you're going to win. You're going to win. Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. Things like that. Not, yeah. M- more not like you're going to win. More like, uh, you know, you're ready, you know. Okay. Right. And, um, and, you know, now it's just time to, to show what, what you've worked hard for. I mean, you're not going to be confident if you didn't train really hard and, sure. and train the right way and sacrifice and, and, uh, and so you can't just, you can't rely solely on the mental, but, uh, but you can train, you know, super hard and be totally ready and not be right mentally. And, Absolutely. And lose. Great point. Um, so, you know, you have to do the training, you have to do all that work and, and I, and the mental part, you know, it's not just something that you work on, the day of it's like no it, it needs to happen through the Throughout. whole through the whole camp through the whole training process you know what are you telling yourself um and in between the rounds what are you telling yourself when you got fresh guys rotating on you you know are you staying calm are you staying mm-hmm. positive when you're in bad positions you, got you know one what, minute to recover between rounds yeah, yeah what's take- the visualization you're doing at the end of training, you know, what are you thinking about when you're, you know, meditating, when you're resting, when you're recovering, when you're stretching, when you're, you know, uh, in the ice bath or whatever, you know what I mean? And, uh, your chamber conditioning sessions, you know, I mean, it's a day in day out process. It starts when you wake up and it doesn't stop until you finally fall asleep, but you're, you're putting the positive food in your mind. Um, the, the, the whole time and, and, you know, kind of going back to what I was saying earlier about the, the differences in the training, um, you know, like the methodology, methodology and, and the whole mindset, everything going from jujitsu to MMA now, you know, I'm still doing more, I'm still following the same things, but the okay. fact that I'm, I'm out of my comfort zone and have this extra drive and feeling young again and being able to to chase something sure you having know? that excitement yeah. yes it's it's a whole new motivation because jujitsu i've been competing at the highest level for a very long time and and that confidence has been there you know i know that i can perform i know that i can beat you know uh i believe that i can beat anybody in jujitsu on any given day and um and so it, it it's easier for me to have that confidence because i've already I've already proved that to myself. Yeah. And you've experienced that already. I've experienced, exactly. Done it over and, and uh, over. And so it's not that I didn't train hard for jiu-jitsu, but it's just that the, the mentality and the motivation, now I feel that young hungerness. That again. rejuvenation now. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So and how do so you feel that's still, going to translate? I'm the sorry. Same, I still follow the same um, – you know, kind of, uh, process as far as like, 
you know, the, how I drill, I still drill for MMA. I still focus a lot on the technique. Uh, you know, I have my hard sessions. I still believe a lot in the conditioning, the diet, the recovery, but I've basically just turned it up even higher, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, and, uh, and so I, I feel like I'm, I'm reaching new levels as an athlete and, um, you know, physically, mentally, technically, um, it's, it's a really exciting time for me. Going back to uh, BJJ real quick, what would you prescribe to the athlete wanting to get really, really good at a world-class level? Like, how would you tell him to drill? Would you encourage positional sparring? Like, how does that work for you? Like, how did you like to drill for these world-class tournaments? Well, you know, there's there's definitely a lot of different, uh, you know, elements that you have to put into your training. Um, you know, there's, there's just the, the hard competition style training, uh, you know, where you're doing just a lot of rounds, you know, those long days, those long sessions. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, you know, what, what, what I try to do, what, what I always try to follow being, especially that I've been secluded, um, you know, I, I didn't, I, I didn't have access to that, that, uh, you know, high level training. I still don't. Um, all the time, you know, it was, it was be rare whenever I would get pushed, you know, it, it started like I was going to Ohio, you know, well, first it started going to California and stuff when I was younger, yeah. uh, going to Brazil. And then, you know, uh, when I, when I hooked up with, with Salo and Shanji Hibero, um, you know, right around 2004, they were living in Ohio, funny, the same state I was born in. <laughs> That's and, weird. Uh, and and Toledo, Ohio, of all places, <laughs> uh, and and so I was going out there, you know, four times a year. Maybe they would come do a seminar at my place, and we would start to, you know, do an exchange where we we're trying to see each other like every other month or every few months, and uh, and we would have little one week stretches or two week stretches together, and uh, and so it was always about, you know data collecting data you know it was like okay when i did get access to you know a high level of training Mm -hmm. and uh and i was getting pushed i was getting tapped and i was learning different things it was like okay now let's bring that home Mm -hmm. and let's fine tune you know what did i Ah. what did i what did i learn you know what did i reflection Exactly. And so then it's like, okay, where can I be better? Where can I tighten up? And that's going to be what I'm going to drill. Maybe it's te- technical stuff, technical, actual techniques themselves that I want to rep- do a lot of repetitions of, okay. technical technical sequences mm. that I want to do a lot of rep- repetitions of, the transitions. And, uh, and then also, you know, the positional training is like, okay, I definitely have a weakness here. I have a weakness there, mm. you know, and I'll, I'll put myself in those specific situations with my students. And, um, and that's to develop comfort. Yeah. It's just to, to, to get gains. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you're the best guy in the room and you can train a certain way and tap everybody, you're not going to get any better, right. you know? Mm-hmm. And so, you have to put yourself in situations where you limit yourself or you start in bad positions, you work on specific areas, and then you also drill to fine tune those those same areas where you're weak and also add to where you're already strong. Mm-hmm. And um, and so, you know, when, whenever I first started training with Salo and Shanji, I was a, a 100% guard player. I mean, mm-hmm. I was a run out there, pull first, and and, and win with, with my guard. Okay. And, and, you know, now most people know me as a top player. That's where I prefer to be now. But I, you know, I didn't become a, a good on a good top player until, you know, I was already a few years in of, of being a black belt. Wow. Uh, several years. And actually, you know, it wasn't wow. until maybe like around 2009, you know, five years of being a black belt that I was like, really like, okay, now I want to, I want to pass, I want to mount and I want to finish on top. Mm. And, um, you know, that came from the drilling and the specific training and, and, you know, making myself do things that, that, uh, you know, I didn't normally do to, to become well-rounded. And so I feel like, you know, throughout your week, you have to have those times plugged in, you know, those sessions where it's just about the hard training uh-huh. and you 
you collect the data so the next day you can you know fine tune do the specific training in those areas mm-hmm. uh you know, uh, also the drilling, you know, I think the higher level you are, I believe you don't have to drill as much. I believe that training with like your blue and purple belts is your drilling, you know? Mm, okay. And maybe, uh, that's, that's handicapping, how it's maybe handicapping yourself. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Okay. It's, it, you know, I still like to do lots of repetitions of certain techniques, but What's lots? I, is it like in the tens, the twenty? Like in one sitting, in one clip, are you knocking out ten, and then your partner goes? Or are you doing fifty, and then your partner goes? And are they speed time. reps? It's more for time. More for time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like five minutes, you know, of this, or maybe, maybe um, you know, like a a minute long like takedown burst, you know, mm-hmm. different things like that. Uh, a lot of that I'll do just for conditioning, just right. for the, yeah. That that was gonna be my next question actually. Um, how does your diet change? Did your diet change for MMA? Because I assume you have to cut more weight now, right? It, unless you're fighting. Yeah, yes and no. Mm-hmm. Yes and no. Um, you know, it, it is way more strict uh, because in jiu-jitsu, I really, I, I kind of like, I don't care. <laughs> you just fell into your weight class, right? <laughs> now, whatever, like, because, you know, whenever I was competing as a black belt early on, I was competing with Salo and Shanji. And so a lot of times I would move up um, out of my natural weight to not be in the same division as them. Okay. You know, that's mm. how I ended up winning the worlds at ultra heavy. Wow. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I grew up doing ultra heavy because at Damn. juvenile, uh, if you're over like 180, it's just, it, it's over. And yeah. so, um, there were some tournaments, you know, as I became an adult competitor where I just, I was, I was doing ultra, but then I leaned up a little bit as I got older and, and, uh, but, you know, I didn't want to be in the same division as Solo and Shanji, and so I'd always move up. And uh, and I felt like I could match up good with, with the bigger guys because I'm long and flexible. And, and so I, I really stopped caring about weight classes. I would do anything from heavy to ultra heavy. Um, you know, heavyweight is, is normally my, my natural weight class um, with with a decent diet. Like, I mean, a good diet. Like, mm-hmm. I, I don't eat don't bad. Um and maybe I'd have to cut a little bit just to to make the weight, you know, with the gi on the day of. Sure. Um, but, but just it was, the basic it was, dehydration. It was you know, I, I would cut a lot. I would diet a lot for ADCC when ADCC switched their their rule to weighing in every day. I believe that was um, 2011. Um, they started doing that, and uh, and and then I kind of played around with doing medium heavy. For a little while, I did medium heavy at the Worlds and medium heavy and Nogi Worlds um, and played around with being really strict on my diet and being like pretty thin mm-hmm. and walk, walking around at like 195. Um, my Right nowadays, my healthy weight is 210 um, and, uh, you know, cut a little bit, make heavy weight in the gi, which is 207 with the gi on, but that's day of. Yeah. Um, and so with MMA, um, you know, I, I really just need to get myself down to about 200 and uh, a comfortable 200 pounds. And then, you know, then you have the whole cutting weight process um, to make 185. But then I have, you know, 24, over 24 hours to refuel, which is – that is completely different because in sure. jiu-jitsu – all the main competitions, IBJJF wise, you weigh in right the day of the match. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. Do you see how do you sell? How do you see yourself stacking up against a lot of the the um, the people in your weight class and MMA? Some of the top guys. You're a 185er. How do you see yourself stacking up against them, especially with your jujitsu abilities? You're you're one of the best Brazilian jujitsu practitioners out there. So mm-hmm. going into MMA, you have a big advantage over a lot of people, especially if you're willing to and a- are able to get the fight to the ground. How do you feel yourself stacking up against some of the best guys in that weight class? It's a wrap if he gets them down to the ground. <laughs> That's what I say. I'm sorry. Um, you know, this is, you know, look, I, I'm, I would say maybe now I'm, I'm a blue belt in MMA. Uh, and, um you know, I, I'm definitely looking to show my my evolution next week. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm it, 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 things are coming together for me. Um, I'm feeling the the I'm feeling the progress. It's it's becoming fun. 
Um, I'm training with really, really, really good people. I have, I, you know, this is kind of stuff I thought about at the end of last year. You know, I, I had, um, uh, a two fight contract with legacy that I fulfilled at the end of last year. Yeah. And, and I, I, that was kind of like, okay, I don't want to, you know, get older and never have done MMA because that was always the plan. And, and I felt like it was something I had to do. I had to get out of my comfort zone and learn and, and as a martial artist and, uh, and, and, but I didn't want to commit myself to too much. And after doing those two fights at the end of last year, you know, I thought about it so much. I talked a lot with my family about it. Uh, my wife, my father, mm. Solo, uh, my, my Muay Thai coach. And, um, and it was like, okay, you know, what am I doing? You know, am I gonna, am I gonna chase this? Am I gonna go after this? Um, or am I done? Or am I just gonna do one more? Or what, you know, what do I want? And, um, and, you know, I, I thought about it a lot and I, and I, I made the goal, you know, uh, that I want, I, that I want to do more and I want to reach a big show. I want to, mm-hmm. I want to compete on the highest level. I really do. And, um, it, it's fun for me. I'm, I'm learning, I'm motivated, I'm hungry. I feel, you know, I feel so great, like to have this motivation right now. Sure. And, uh, and I'm tapping into so many things that so many abilities that I know I've had my whole life, but mm-hmm. I just didn't explore it because I was so focused only on jujitsu. Yeah, right. They were dormant, and, uh, and now they're yeah, coming out. Exactly. And you know, I'm long. I have a great frame for 185. Sure I believe do. That my jujitsu is is perfect for MMA. I'm blessed to have arguably the greatest jujitsu uh, teacher. You know, sensei, Oof. possible in in Solo Hibeto, and uh, and you know, with my father, uh, the way I grew up, having mm. Solo that, that style of jiu-jitsu, and now the Muay Thai, the the people that I train Muay Thai with, um, Evolu Santai, Mauricio Veo, and Andre Dita. Andre Dita is a K1 fighter. Um, they are our first generation shootbox black belts under Rafael Cordero. They grew up mm. with Anderson and Vanderlei and Shogun, wow. and, um, and they have an amazing Muay Thai style that I am absolutely in love with. <laughs> and uh, and I'm exploring so many different things right now, and and I really, I really feel things coming together. And I I am you know, I'm not I, I'm not at a, near at a level now yet where I can say. You know, uh, put me against the best guys in the UFC. You know, but I believe that I can be there, and I can be there in a in a relatively short time. So yeah, I feel like you do have the ability, especially your jujitsu is is outstandingly better than a lot of MMA fighters. Obviously, jujitsu and jujitsu competition is different than jujitsu and MMA, but you do hold that that big advantage over a lot of people so and the fact that you've been training martial arts since you were a child um as opposed to bjj guys that just get into striking at an older age um i believe you do have a big advantage and and if you really did want to pursue what you're saying you do to reach a high level i i believe you can make it there like you said you have a good body type for it and you do have this big advantage over a lot of people and it doesn't just come from the jujitsu aspect yeah, I appreciate that. First things first, mission next week. Yeah, man. Boom. Uh, the, one of my goals I wrote down going into 2016 was to become legacy champ, and that was going to be the the jump start to to getting into a bigger show. And of course, and I had I had this opportunity right here in front of me. And uh, how do you see you this know, fight unfolding? My my opponent is is uh, very well rounded. You know, um, it's I, I see it bringing out the best in me that's what i see i see it fully bringing out you know what i'm capable of um he's he's an experienced black belt under robert drysdale he comes from a great team um he uh, has muay thai uh like amateur muay thai fight experience he's worked on a stand-up a long time as well his number one focus has been mma um longer than it has been mine yeah and uh you know he's gonna come hungry, and so, um, you know I I believe I'm just gonna have to be better everywhere, better on the feet, better on the ground, 
and uh, you know I'm going to be going for the finish the whole time. So um, I, I can't say how or when or you know whatever how it's going to happen, but um, I do 100% believe that I will be victorious and my arms will be getting raised, and um, you know I'm going to get that belt. Oos. Awesome, man. Where, and what is your goal past past this fight? I mean, you said you had you had finished a contract last fight. What is your contract like now? Do you have other fights on legacy on a legacy contract, or are you yes? Past it? Yeah, um, I did sign it, sign another multiple fight contract with them, but they're 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 really cool. Like, um, I can't say enough good things about legacy. The the, the event itself is awesome, and, and the people that you know that I'm working with on there, uh, they're they're really like about um, catapulting, um, all of their fighters careers. And okay. so if, 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 a if an opportunity comes up, um, they will 100% support me in, in getting into a bigger show. And, um, you know, uh, they're, they're in my area. And so if, if nothing does happen, I'll be more than happy to defend my belt. Um, you know, later in the year, they'll, they'll be coming to Oklahoma city doing the first Oklahoma city show. So, Nice. That's you know whatever. Yeah, exactly. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, but uh, you know, in the meantime, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a vacation. I got that all planned. <laughs> uh, long vacation with my wife. Um, but um, you know, I, I'm I'm still going to do jujitsu. Like you know, I started off my year with a, a, a grappling super fight um, and with with fight to win that was an um, that awesome was, fight by the way congrats mm-hmm. man yeah. thank you thank you really skillful uh, really masterful movements thank you that was um uh, kind of like to jump start my mma camp was to do that to do that match um really get me you know get me warmed up get the adrenaline pump in and and it was it was perfect um but uh you know i, I i'm still teaching in teaching jiu-jitsu, training in the gi, you know, uh-huh. jiu-jitsu is what I love to do. And I want to stay active between the times that I'm able to get MMA fights. And so um, I have a couple jiu-jitsu super fights already scheduled for the summer. Um, oh, nice. You know, Can I'm, you give inf- some some information on those fights? Yeah. Uh, you know, look, first things first, I got to make sure I come out of next week healthy and, yep. and, uh, <laughs> and everything's good. But – uh, I'm not looking past my opponent next week, um, but uh, you know I did have some opportunities come my way, and, and everyone understands that that I have this fight. Uh, but as long as I come out healthy, everything is set. I will be competing May 21st at the Respect Jiu Jitsu Three Card event. Uh, it's in St. Louis. J W Wright holds that event. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a good guy. We've talked about me getting on one of those events before in the past. Is that a sub uh, only? A points? It's a, it has points. Uh, it's a, you know, just a time limit, um, like ten minute super fight. I'll be the main event. JT Torres is on the card and a four man. Uh, Gianni Grippo is is yeah. on another four man. They put together and, good uh, events, really good. Super yeah, fights. yeah. It's, it looks like it's going to be really nice. And I got uh, my black belt, Jared Dopp. Um, he's he's on the card too. So we're going to travel down there together. That and that's in the beast. That's in the gi. That's going to be in the gi. So after this, I'll be back in the gi, uh, which is perfect because in the month of May, I'm, I'm hosting a world's camp at my academy uh, and getting all my guys ready for the worlds. I mean, that's I'm not going away from jujitsu, you know. So everyone out there can rest assured. Look, <laughs> you're not, not going to see me in the in the IBJJF tournaments anymore. I'm, I'm unless, unless it's unless it's pure fun, unless it's uh, something that just you know, Solo and Shanji are competing. I want to join them, or uh, you know, it's in a it's in a location that sounds like a great place to travel and see. And hey, I'm there. Maybe I'll jump in. But okay. the, the 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 IBJJF tournament grind I've done since I was 15 years old, and uh, I'm finally at a point now where I can happily kind of stay away from that. And uh, uh, but. I still want to show my jiu-jitsu, and so I'm, I'm really just looking for super fight opportunities, and I'm thankful that there's a lot now. Yeah. And, uh, right. and so I have, I have the May 21st uh, respect event, and then in June, um, Fight to Win Pro is coming back. They're going to be in Dallas, and I'm headlining that card. I'll be competing for their light heavyweight gi title, um, going nice. against a 
very tough Atos competitor, Pedro Melo. Um, mm. He's not as well known, but uh, he's he's been in Brazil doing really well down there for a long time, and he just uh, made the move to California, um, and he closed out the pan with uh, Guto and Keenan um, wow. one year, and you know, so he's. He's, uh, that has to hurt to close a, a, out a division with three of your teammates. That has to hurt. Yeah, well, they got so many good guys on Atos, so it happens. Oh, but man. But, uh, anyways, I'll be facing him June seventeenth. So this summer is going to be a little gi, a little like get back to the the gentle art, and uh, and then hopefully in the fall, um, get back to MMA. Another fight and see what happens. Excellent, man. Awesome, man. Well, uh, you know, we're, we want to be mindful of your time as always. And, you know, we really appreciate you coming on. Um, Thank you for the informative nuggets. Hopefully our fans and listeners will uh, process this information and apply it. My pleasure. My pleasure, guys. I really, uh, you know, I'm a fan of your guys' work. I think it's it's great to see, you know, like I was following your guys' Instagram back when, you know, you were still building it, and uh, <laughs> and now you have a lot of followers, and you guys are making all these cool videos and clips. And you know, hey, I'll say one thing. Yeah, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for my T-shirt or uh, or hoodie. Oh uh, my god! I want to rep you guys. I want to rep it. Ooh, I like us. It. Dude, yeah, we're gonna get a package tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Straight up. But, you, know, you guys were sharing uh, a lot of my videos uh, and competitions, and uh, yeah, man, we're big fans. We we really are big fans, and and we like we're happy that you came on because you got to really expose your martial arts history, and and not everybody ha- has paid attention to every source of media out there, and you know this is just a good lesson for everybody that say, oh, Lovato just jumped into MMA. No, he didn't. He's been training MMA all his life. You know, so yeah. it was a really good opportunity for you to come on and and tell the tell everybody you know about your history in martial arts. I appreciate it. Th- yeah, thanks for the opportunity, guys, and uh, to everyone out there that's listening. Um, you know, support show show the art. Follow them on their on their social media and check out their the podcast and uh, and of course follow me on my social media as well. Mm. Uh, check, check out my fan page on Facebook, my Instagram, Lovato Junior BJJ. I'm constantly uh, trying to put out good material for you guys. And uh, once this summer summer comes, I'm going to be uh, doing a, uh, some more technical um, you know series, uh, some more instructional stuff. And I have my coaching site and nice. uh, yeah. a lot of good things I'll be putting out there. And I'm hosting the World's Camp in May. Um, May 16th through 21st. Mm. Um, so, and I, and this is the second time that I'm opening up to, to all affiliations. Um, it's oh, something nice. that I've, I've done every year, um, for people inside my team and the Hibeto team. And, um, uh, and last year I opened it up, um, to, to all, you know, anyone that was interested. And I had 10 people come from all over the country in Canada. And uh, I'm hosting that again this year and starting to promote it now. And so people can see information about that on my, on my Facebook page. And, um, you know, uh, I'm not, I'm not done with jujitsu. <laughs> so, um, just, uh, you know, just challenging myself in, in the cage right now, but uh, I'm always going to be representing jujitsu. Well, awesome, you're man. an eternal martial artist, and that's what we strive to be: eternal learners, and just always showcasing our artistry to the max. So, Ooh, awesome guys! Thanks, Keep man. Up great work. You too, Thank man. You, professor. Good luck, man. Thank you.